Faith for Today with Colin Urquhart and Julia Fisher. This week, Colin, uh, a new subject. You've taken us to 1 John. We know that you're a great fan of John. This week, though, you're talking about the relationship between faith and love. These are two strands that run throughout this epistle. Uh, yes, I'm, uh, I, I'm a great fan of John. If there's anyone besides Jesus that I want to meet in heaven, it's John. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, simply because he had such a great relationship and understanding of Jesus. He was the closest of all the uh, um, apostles to Jesus, understood Jesus better than anybody else, and um, had this unique relationship of love with him. And, of course, we have so many insights into the relationship that Jesus had with his father in, in the Gospel of John, and the principles that underlay Jesus' ministry are all really explained there in a way that they're not explained in the other Gospels. But then we have this first letter of John uh, written as a general letter to the churches of the time, about probably 50 years after the resurrection of Jesus. John was an old man. He was in his 80s when he wrote this. And um, he'd had 50 years' experience of seeing the outworking of all that he learned from Jesus in the power of the Holy Spirit. He was someone who lived throughout the ministry of Jesus with Jesus, but then he'd had these 50 years of experience of Christ in him. And uh, it, it's a letter that really has the marks of, of written by an elderly person. You know, um, people are very forthright when they get older. It's as if uh, they realize, well, they may not have that much more time on this earth, so there's no, there's no time to fool around and to mess around and to go around the mulberry bush. We've got to go straight to the heart of things. So John does go straight to the heart of things. And, of course, he's a man of faith and he's a man of love. He um, describes himself in John's Gospel as the disciple whom Jesus loved. And, of course, he doesn't mean that he didn't love the others. There was just this unique closeness between Jesus and John. Now, uh, these two themes of faith and love uh, are intertwined. It's almost as if they're, uh, they're sort of plaited together. And uh, one moment um, John is talking about faith and then he's talking about love. But there's a third word uh, that becomes very important in this epistle, and that is the word obedience. Uh, I say to our, our Bible school students in our college, I say, what is the word we all love? And they say, <laughs> obedience. <laughs> Ever since they've been students, they've been taught to love obedience. Now, why is that? Because in Scripture, obedience is the outworking of faith and it's the outworking of love. Uh, Paul talks about his apostolic responsibility to bring people into the obedience that comes from faith. And Jesus said, if you love me, you will obey my commands. So <clears throat> the reason why John intertwines uh, faith and love is because he wants to encourage everybody in their obedience. Now, of course, if we love Jesus, as he says, we will obey him. If we honor the Lord, as we say we do when we worship him and praise him, then, of course, we will obey him. And uh, Jesus said, by their fruit you will know them. So God is not looking for sort of claims in our lives where we would say, well, I'm a believer or I'm a person of love. What he's looking for is the obedience that will produce fruitfulness. And, of course, when people are challenged in, in their Christian lives um, to obey, 
This can bring out all the negative reactions to authority because obedience is really acknowledging the authority of God, the authority of his word, the authority of Jesus. It's living as if he's Lord instead of just calling him Lord. And you remember that Jesus himself said, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and yet do not do what I say? In other words, he's saying, if I am your Lord, you will obey me. So what I, I want to do this week as we look at various parts of uh, 1 John, we won't have time to look at everything, but we will be able to see how this life of faith that um, John is encouraging and the outworking of Jesus' command to love one another as he has loved us is going to lead to a life of obedience that will in turn lead to fruitfulness. And Jesus said that the Father is glorified by the fruit that we bear. So ultimately, you see that John's motive in writing this is so that God may be glorified in the lives of the people to whom he's writing. So um, that's, if you like, is, is setting out the plan for the week. Was he writing to a particular group of people when he wrote these epistles? Yes, he, um, he, it's a general letter. It's not addressed to uh, one particular church. You know, there are different kinds of apostles, and, and John was a very different kind of apostle from Paul. Uh, we don't have any information of John planting churches in the way that Paul did, for example. And um, John certainly wasn't, uh, uh, an, uh, as far as we know, um, a, uh, an apostle to the Gentiles in the way that Paul was. Um, he was obviously greatly revered. I think as somebody who uh, was really going to keep the church walking in the truth, keep the doctrine right, keep everything according to the word of God, uh, see the outworking of love and all that uh, Jesus taught him. Uh, really, our information about John is, is very sketchy. Um, except that we do know that he outlived the other, um, certainly the main apostles. Um, and uh, what happened, of course, be because of the expense of writing letters and, and so on in that time, is that uh, these letters were circulated from one church to another. It would have been common for um, a letter to be sent to one church. They would then copy it keep one copy and send a copy on to the next church, who would then do the same. They would copy it and, and send a copy on. And uh, if you remember, Paul says in some of his letters, see that this church is read in the church at so-and-so. -so. so we know there was this circulation of letters going on. So if this was written 50 years after the resurrection, was there a particular issue that was going on in the churches that John was concerned about? Uh, there were probably a number of issues. That was certainly the case when he wrote his gospel. The gospel is written in the face of a real attack of heresy upon the church and of a total misunderstanding that was circulating that John the Baptist had been the Messiah. So uh, that was, if you like, historically motivated in part in the way in which he presents the material. Um, but um, here, I, I think... John is simply making a statement of what needs to be at the heart of, of um, the Christian life is that everybody is walking in the truth of God's word and of God's spirit, that they are people of faith, they are people of love, they therefore are people of obedience, and therefore, they produce much fruit that glorifies the Father. So it's usually called a general letter because it, it doesn't home in just on sort of specific issues like Paul has to that need to be addressed in particular churches. But this is obviously a letter to be circulated among the churches. It comes, of course, with great authority because it was written by John. 
and um, is so obviously the work of the same person that wrote the gospel. So uh, you, if you put, actually, if you put the gospel of John and this first letter together, you do have everything you need to know about the gospel and about how to live the gospel. Uh, I mean, all scripture is written for our learning and, and therefore, you know, we, we don't home in just on a couple of books. But actually, you've got the essence. If, if somebody said to me, you could only have two books in the Bible, uh, which would they be? I wouldn't even hesitate. I'd say John's Gospel and the first letter of John. In, in those two Gospels, you've got everything that you need to actually live a fruitful Christian life. Wonderful, isn't it? So, uh, Jesus' words are echoed. Uh, you, you know, as you, as you read this epistle, and we'll get into the details of all this more for the, in, during the rest of the week, but as you read this, you sometimes wonder, now is this Jesus speaking or is this John speaking? And of course you get exactly the same uh, even in the gospel because one minute Jesus is speaking, the next minute John is explaining what Jesus means. And because in the original Greek there were no inverted commas, uh, you have to decide, well, where was Jesus ending and where was John beginning? And uh, that's quite an interesting thing to do. Uh, but uh, it just shows how close John's thinking was to that of Jesus. You've been listening to Faith for Today, presented by Julia Fisher. This program is sponsored by Kingdom Faith. For further information, visit our website, kingdomfaith.com. 